leading the platform party are Dr. Seth Meehan and the Reverend James F. Keenan of the Society of Jesus. Chief Marshals of the platform and Kevin McLaughlin, President of the Boston College Alumni Association. Now processing are the deans of the schools and colleges of the university. Entering next are the provost and dean of faculties, vice presidents, and senior administrators of Boston College. Approaching the platform now are the members of the Board of Trustees and Trustee Associates of the University. Processing next are our 2018 Honorary Degree Candidates. Reverend Joseph P. Duffy of the Society of Jesus, escorted by Thomas J. Keady, Jr., Vice President for Governmental and Community Affairs. Drew Gilpin Faust escorted by David Quigley, Provost and Dean of Faculties. Kendall Bridges Reed, escorted by Dan Bunch, Special Assistant to the Vice President for Student Affairs. Alberto Vasayo III, escorted by Michael Serrazio, Assistant Professor, Department of Communication. Processing now, are His Eminence, Cardinal Sean O'Malley, Archbishop of Boston, and the Reverend Robert L. Keane of the Society of Jesus, Rector of the Jesuit Community. And now, our commencement speaker, the Most Reverend Wilton D. Gregory, Metropolitan Archbishop of Atlanta. <laughs> Escorted by Peter K. Markell, Chair of the Boston College Board of Trustees, and the Reverend William P. Leahy of the Society of Jesus, President 
of Boston College. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for our national anthem and remain standing for the invocation. The University Chorale, under the direction of John Finney, will sing the national anthem. Paul W. McNellis of the Society of Jesus will offer the invocation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we ask your blessing on those who are not here today because they have gone before us. Welcome them into your eternal peace, and may we always remember with gratitude what you have given us through their love and sacrifice. Bless our students who today commence their lives as Boston College graduates. Grant them an ever-increasing desire to know the truth, to judge wisely, and to face the trials of life with courage, perseverance, and hope. Grant them generous hearts so what they have received here at Boston College may be shared with others wherever they go. May others see in them a reflection of your justice and mercy. Bless all those, friends, family, and teachers whose love and sacrifice over so many years has brought us to this day. We ask this through Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. William P. Leahy of the Society of Jesus, President of Boston College, will now offer his welcoming remarks. Mr. Markell and members of the Board of Trustees, Your Eminence, Cardinal O'Malley, honored guests, particularly Archbishop Gregory of Atlanta, our speaker today, and our other distinguished honorary degree recipients, members of the Golden Jubilee Class of 1968 and the Silver Jubilee Class of 1993, members of the Boston College faculty and staff, alumni, parents, guests, and friends, and especially the 2018 graduates of Boston College. Good morning. On 
On behalf of the entire university community, I welcome all here this morning in Alumni Stadium and those participating via webcast to the 142nd commencement of Boston College. This ceremony marks an end and a beginning for our graduates. One phase of their lives is over and new possibilities and opportunities await them. Today is about gratitude, memories, and the future. We are especially grateful for our graduates and for what they have accomplished as students during their years at the Heights. They enlivened and strengthened Boston College with their talent, energy, enthusiasm, and generosity. Today also reminds us about how much our graduates receive from their parents, spouses, family, and friends, whose steadfast support, encouragement, and challenge had such a decisive impact. And so to express our gratitude, may I ask that family and friends of those receiving degrees stand to allow the class of 2018, faculty, staff, and others present, to express our thanks to you for all of the ways in you helped our graduates. So parents, family members, could you please stand? This graduation ceremony also is an appropriate time to recognize Boston College faculty, administrators, and staff for the ways, often quiet and unnoticed, in which they help graduates grow in self-knowledge, develop their talents, choose next steps in life, and recognize the importance of living lives of meaning and purpose. Finally, we express appreciation to Boston College alumni and friends for their generous gifts of time, advice, and financial resources that made it possible for many to graduate. Today is certainly about gratitude, but it also invites us to remember people and moments that have had such influence in our lives. Members of the class of 2018 and all receiving degrees today take with them relationships and memories that will be part of them forever, such as friendships begun and nourished over the years that taught powerful lessons about self, the goodness of others, and the presence of God. Experiences on a service trip or study abroad that expanded understanding and appreciation of differences and of the world. A faculty member, administrator, or staff member who had a transformative impact on intellectual development or personal growth. Someone who will continue to be an influence for years to come. As we gather here today, I am convinced that Boston College has never been more aligned with its core mission, to be a great university focused on undergraduate education, emphasizing the liberal arts and sciences, as well as selected graduate and professional programs, and committed to its Jesuit Catholic heritage and values. Boston College has never been stronger, more confident, and more capable of assisting contemporary society and the Catholic Church to respond to challenges. We live in a world that desperately needs people of intelligence and commitment 
to, the work for, to work for the good of society. Too many around the world live amid violence, war, poverty, and illiteracy. Religious faith is threatened by intolerance and apathy, especially in the Middle East. Racial, social, and economic inequality continue to plague our world. Governments at the state and national level struggle to overcome partisanship and address urgent matters concerning immigration, the environment, education, and housing. These are daunting problems. But that has been true in every age. And since the founding of the first Jesuit school in Messina, Sicily in 1548, Jesuit education has sought to prepare graduates to be a leaven for good in society. People who have the preparation, desire, and abiding hope necessary for a better tomorrow. You graduates of the class of 2018 have great talent and promise because of who you are and what you have experienced in our community. I urge that you give to others from the abundance that you have received and put into practice the principles, values, and beliefs of Jesuit education that continue to shape Boston College and challenge its alumni. May such phrases as men and women for others and go set the world on fire animate and inspire you as you live and work in the 21st century. May you always remember to pray and not lose heart to go and bear fruit that will last, and to be beacons of hope and light, giving comfort and example to those around you. And may God continue to bless you and your families. Thank you. I will now read the Latin version of the degree. Coratoras Collegi Bostoniensis, Omnibus As Litras Lecturis, Salutem in Domino. Ishe Litris Nos, Ad Id Muneris, Summa Republicae Massachusetts, Autoritate Delegati, Testamor delectos nobis rite probatos, ad atiem, scientiae, educationis, legum, res socialis, philosophiae, theologiae, gratis fuisse provectos, ad omnibus et singulis juribus et privilegis, ad istos grados pertinentibus, eos a nobis fuisse. Donatus, quod ut omnibus in otescat as literas, communi nostro sigillo e presidis huius collegi chirographo munitas, dedimus in aula nostra academica, die vicesimo primo, mense maio, anno domini bis millesimo, Octavo decimo. The candidates for the honorary degrees will now be presented to the president of the university. Joseph P. Duffy, SJ. A man for others, Joseph P. Duffy of the Society of Jesus has devoted most of his life in service to his alma mater. 
As university secretary, he directed these commencement exercises with patience, grace, and attention to detail. During his two-decade tenure, the event evolved from a ceremony witnessed only by the alumni stadium audience to one viewed worldwide via webcast. This native Bostonian and proud eagle earned a trio of degrees from Boston College after graduating from Boston College High School. During a distinguished early career as an educator, dedicated to enriching the hearts and minds of youth, he was named principal of Chevres High School in Portland, Maine, and later BC High, which established a scholarship in his honor. Returning to the Heights, he joined the Lynch School of Education faculty and went on to serve as Jesuit community rector and as a university trustee. A popular figure on campus, he remains active with the Boston College Association of Retired Faculty, for which he is a liaison to several campus groups, including the Office of the Provost and the Jesuit community. To this loyal son of Boston College, the university confers on Joseph P. Duffy of the Society of Jesus the degree of Doctor of Science in Education honoris causa. Drew Gilpin Faust. There are those who write history and those who make history. Drew Gilpin Faust has done both. A highly respected historian and academic leader, she was named the 28th president of Harvard University in July of 2007, making her the first woman to lead the nation's oldest university since its founding in 1636. Harvard's Lincoln Professor of History and a scholar of the Civil War, she is the author of six books and was awarded the Bancroft Prize in 2009 for her most recent publication, This Republic of Suffering, Death and the American Civil War. She also served as founding dean of the Radcliffe Institute for Advanced Study, which is dedicated to creating and sharing transformative ideas across the arts, humanities, and sciences. With grace and pragmatism, she has sought to improve access to Harvard College for students of all economic backgrounds by increasing financial aid. Under her leadership, Harvard broadened its international reach, put a renewed emphasis on the arts, sought sustainable solutions, and open classrooms to all by launching the online learning partnership edX. For her insightful examination of our nation's history, her contributions as one of the world's most influential educational leaders, and her steadfast faith in the future of the liberal arts university, Boston College confers on Drew Gilpin Faust the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa. <laughs> Kendall Bridges Reed. For 27 years, Home Box Office was home base for film producer Kendall Bridges Reed. In the film, Journey of the African American Athlete, this gifted storyteller helped document 
the many challenges and indignities, as well as the significant triumphs of black athletes, ranging from Jesse Owens and Jackie Robinson to Althea Gibson and Wilma Rudolph. Acclaimed as the most comprehensive examination of the history of the African-American athlete, this documentary celebrated the pioneering achievements of blacks in all sports. She and her collaborators followed with Dare to Compete, the Struggle of Women in Sports, which traces the history of American women and their fight for equality in athletics, highlighting the strife and victories of many of the greatest American female athletes the film demonstrates how each generation narrowed the gender gap on and off the field. Both documentaries won Peabody Awards. This 1979 Boston College graduate also created acclaimed films that link sports and race, including documentaries on Boston Celtics great Bill Russell, the 1968 Detroit Tigers, and O.J. Simpson. For her contributions to the world of film and our understanding of the struggle for racial and gender equality in America, Boston College awards Kendall Bridges Reed the Doctor of Fine Arts Honoris Causa. Alberto Vasallo III. The son of immigrants from Cuba and Ecuador, Alberto Vasallo III has dedicated his life to providing news and opportunity for the growing Latino community and to forging connections on its behalf with his hometown of Boston. A 1989 graduate of Boston College, he is president and CEO of El Mundo Boston, which publishes the largest Spanish language newspaper in New England. A successful family-run business founded in 1972, El Mundo Boston has expanded to include a digital presence and event sponsorships, making it the premier point of contact with the region's Hispanic marketplace. More than 20 years ago, he began a partnership with the Boston Red Sox to create Latino Youth Recognition Days, in which more than 1,500 school children have been honored for their academic achievements. He also established El Mundo Latino Family Festival, an annual event that brings thousands of people to Fenway Park to celebrate Latino culture. In 2004, he launched El Mundo Latino Career Expo, the largest Latino career fair in New England. Each year, he hosts the Hispanic Heritage Breakfast, which gathers leaders from the public and private sectors to honor the contributions of Latinos. He has also been an influential host and producer of a Spanish radio show and local public affairs television programs. In recognition of his lifelong commitment to the Latino community, Boston College confers on Alberto Vasallo III the degree of Doctor of Social Science honoris causa. Most Reverend Wilton D. Gregory. As an 11-year-old at St. Carthage Grammar School in Chicago, Wilton D. Gregory knew that he wanted to be a priest, but never imagined that his vocation would one day lead him to become Archbishop of Atlanta, one of the nation's fastest-growing archdioceses. 
the highest ranking African American bishop in the United States Catholic Church. He has been at the forefront he has been at the forefront of critical issues facing the church and wider society. While president of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops from 2001 to 2004, he played a critical role in the church's response to clergy sexual abuse, especially in the drafting and approval of the Charter for the Protection of Children and Young People a builder of bridges among people of all ages, races, and viewpoints. He chaired the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops Special Task Force to promote peace in our communities, which held discussions between bishops and individuals affected by violence and released recommendations to foster healing and lasting peace through concrete action and ongoing dialogue. Following Pope Francis's encyclical on the environment, he worked with lay leaders to commission a conservation and sustainability plan for the Archdiocese of Atlanta. He has also written pastoral statements regarding the death penalty, euthanasia, and physician-assisted suicide. For his service to the Archdiocese of Atlanta and the United States Catholic Church, and his inspiring commitment to faith and justice, Boston College awards Archbishop Wilton D. Gregory the degree of Doctor of Laws honoris causa. The Most Reverend Wilton D. Gregory, Archbishop of Atlanta, will now address the graduates of the class of 2018. Everyone knows that our spoken words often are simply inadequate to capture the sheer depth of human feelings. What can one possibly say at the wonder of the birth of a baby, or at the anguish in the face of someone who has suffered the death of a loved one? How do we express horror, shame, fear, or today, immense pride and joy? Some phrases in moments of intense feelings are not only inadequate, they have become insipid. We send our thoughts and prayers to cite a useless contemporary phrase. However, there are some words that do manage effectively to fuse the tongue to the human heart. Thank you is a great example. Thank you unveils the truth that we may well have received something that is far beyond our due. Thank you acknowledges that others have played a momentous role in your own personal good fortune. I trust that our graduates today will use that phrase repeatedly when speaking to your family members, to faculty, to administrators, and to the countless hundreds of people here at Boston College who have made your academic adventure not only successful, but perhaps even genuinely blessed. Most of you will search for words today that will express the depths of your feeling for others on this graduation day. Words of thanks, words of pride, and words of wonder at this moment are plentiful. I too have long thought about the words that I might use today here at Boston College's commencement ceremony. 
I have searched for a few words that might inspire and hopefully even encourage our gratitudes. Graduates, I sought for words that simultaneously would honor the great legacy of Jesuit education that is so much a part of this university. Words that might fit this occasion, all without being too lengthy. Words are powerful vehicles, as writers and poets know all too well. Words can bring tears, and they can incite rage. Words can heal, and they can inflame. Occasionally, the very same words can inspire some people while they may enrage others. In today's world, social media have provided almost indispensable platforms for words that can stir the human spirit to positive and negative passions. Black Lives Matter. have become words that some people find encouraging, while others only find them to be agitating, if not threatening. Hashtag Me Too is a phrase, is a phrase that now seems to elicit the same range of conflicting feelings. The greatest challenge that we all continue to face is to make sure that our words do not contradict our actions, our hearts, or our faith. We must all strive to ensure that there is a consistency between what we say and how we live. That unity between our words and our lives is a lifelong challenge for every pa person. Only God himself has managed to achieve perfection in this regard, as St. John the Gospel writer announces when he proclaims, and the Word became flesh. Only God has managed to say everything with one word. There are too many examples, both in today's world and throughout human history, where a person's actions were disconnected from an individual's words. That distinction is often called fraud, which is an ugly word to be sure. A few people historically have been able to use words that stir the human heart to great hope. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a master wordsmith. His death 50 years ago was largely in recompense for the inspiration and the hope that many people found in his words that challenged our nation. Unfortunately, there were and remain people who find those same words to be intimidating and threatening. The author of the book of Hebrews reminded the ancient church and all of us as well that the word of God was a double-edged sword. So too are many of the words that have gained popularity in today's world. I now invite our graduates, and I remind all others here today, in their honor, to take careful watch over the words that we use. We have entered a moment in human history where offensive, abusive words have been absolved and issued a carte blanche, and perhaps even welcomed into public discourse. Through the great advantage 
and equal detriment of social media, debate and disagreement often have been reduced to defamation and denigration. This is absolutely counter to what your Jesuit education has striven to teach you. Disputes are best addressed to principles, to ideas, and to policies, rather than to be used to demolish the reputation, dignity, and humanity of those with whom we may disagree. I urge you to use words that may clearly voice your strong opinions, but also shun the annihilation of anyone's individual human dignity. Your ears here at Boston College have been punctuated by far too many events of violence that have occurred in Las Vegas, Nevada, Charleston, South Carolina, Sutherland Springs, Texas, Orlando and Parkside, Florida, and the most recent one this Friday in Santa Fe, Texas, to mention only the most notorious ones. Most of the perpetrators of those acts of bloodshed were not foreign-born immigrants. But native to our own country, the words that have been used to describe them and their actions have often attempted to identify them as other, while the motives and the psychological conditions of those troubled individuals may never be fully identified, their actions have succeeded in startling our beloved country and indeed all people of goodwill everywhere. Our desired national identity is not that of a cruel or angry people. We are startled and offended by brutal human behavior that recently seems to abound. Therefore, men and women of our nation must unite in calling us to our nobler selves and the way that we speak about and to other people must lay the foundation for a much needed and long overdue restoration of civility and respect. We must work together to address the causes that prompt and allow people to such acts of hatred and brutality. Too often, people have attempted to attribute those horrible events to people of a specific religion or culture, much like some people of a generation ago spoke about those who were engaged in the struggle for civil rights as agitators or disruptors. In truth, we must confess that today's troubled souls have often been influenced not only by their own mental state, but they have also been prompted by the hostile language environment of hatred. Our first responsibility ought to be to lower the tone of rhetoric of hatred. Every one of us must be engaged in the struggle to speak more civilly and respectively, respectfully about and certainly to all other people. The words that our graduates and families will use today with each other will obviously be warm and comforting, gentle and encouraging. Let us now pledge to use such words more frequently so that they always convey a heart that must be deeply passionate in its beliefs, but always compassionate in its expression when speaking about and to all others. St. Paul said it best to the Ephesians and to all of our graduates and to all of us. 
no foul language should come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for needed edification, that it may impart grace to those who hear. God bless BC graduates 2018. The University Chorale will perform Tolite Hostias, composed by Camille Sansen. Tolite Hostias is the final movement of the Christmas Oratorio by Sansen. Today it is sung by the underclassmen of the Chorale as an offering of love and support for all the members of the class of 2018. There now follows the conferral of degrees in course in the order of the foundation of the schools. The dean of each school will present the degree representative to the president for the conferral of the degree. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science in the Robert J. Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present the candidates who have completed all requirements for graduation, and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science. Juan Pablo Ferrero will accept the degree for the class.
Please be seated. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts and Master of Science in the Robert J. Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences Graduate School to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present the candidates who have completed all requirements, and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Master of Arts or Master of Science. Enrico Carnavali will accept the degree for the class. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in the Robert J. Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences Graduate School to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present the candidates who have completed all requirements, and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Teva Regal will accept the degree on behalf of the class. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Master of Laws in the Law School to please rise. Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all the requirements, and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Master of Laws. Xiao Chen Ma will accept the degree for the class. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Laws in the Law School to please rise. Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all the requirements, and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Doctor of Laws. Ritika Bakri will accept the degree for the class. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in the James A. Woods SJ College of Advancing Studies to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all requirements, and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Hei Sung Shin, will accept the degree for the class.
May I ask the candidates for the degrees of Master of Science and Master of Healthcare Administration in the James A. Woods SJ College of Advancing Studies to please rise. <laughs> Father President, I am honored to present the candidates who have completed all requirements, and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degrees of Master of Science and Master of Healthcare Administration. Lynn P. Brockhus will accept the degree for the class. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Master of Social Work in the School of Social Work to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty of the School of Social Work, I'm honored to present those candidates who have completed all the requirements and we hereby certify that they're eligible for the degree of Master of Social Work. Laura Ashley Shuri will accept the degree for the class. Please be seated. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in the School of Social Work to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty of the School of Social Work, I'm honored to present those candidates who have completed all the requirements and we hereby certify that they're eligible for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Christina Murray Sellers will accept the degree for the class. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in the Carroll School of Management to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all the requirements, and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Bachelor of Science. Jay Nam will accept the degree for the class. Peter. Please be seated. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Master of Business Administration, Master of Science in Finance, and Master of Science in Accounting in the Carroll School of Management to please rise.
Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all the requirements, and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Master of Business Administration and Master of Science. Jennifer Francis Fish will accept the degree for the class. Please be seated. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Management Studies in the Carroll School of Management to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all the requirements, and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Management Studies. June Young will accept the degree for the class. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in the William F. Cannell School of Nursing to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present these candidates who have completed all requirements and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Bachelor of Science. Lindsay Jaco will accept the degree for the class. Please be seated. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Master of Science and Specialty Certificates in the William F. Cannell School of Nursing to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I'm honored to present those candidates who have completed all requirements and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Master of Science and for additional specialty certificates. Danielle Bellinger will accept the degree for the class. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in the William F. Cannell School of Nursing to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all requirements, and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Deborah M. Lindquist will accept the degree for the class.
May I ask the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in the Carolyn A. and Peter S. Lynch School of Education to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all of the requirements, and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Caroline Coopersmith will accept the degree for the class. Please be seated. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Master of Education, Master of Arts, Master of Arts in Teaching, Master of Science in Teaching, and the Certificate of Advanced Educational Specialization in the Carolyn A. and Peter S. Lynch School of Education to please rise. Father President, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all requirements, and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Master of Education, Master of Arts, Master of Science, and the Certificate of Advanced Educational Specialization. Yan Yi Zhang will accept the degree for the class. May I ask the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy and Doctor of Education in the Carolyn A. and Peter S. Lynch School of Education to please rise. <laughs> Father President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all requirements, and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy and Doctor of Education. Stephanie Burton will accept the degree for the class. May I ask that the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts in Theology and Ministry, Master of Theological Studies, Master of Divinity, and Master of Theology in the School of Theology and Ministry to please rise. <laughs> By the President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all the requirements of graduation and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of Master of Arts in Theology and Ministry, Master of Theological Studies, Master of Divinity, and Master of Theology. Sarah Mary Toss will accept the degree for the class. Please be seated. May I ask that the candidates for the degree of licentiate in sacred theology in the School of Theology and Ministry to please rise.
By the President, on behalf of the faculty, I am honored to present those candidates who have completed all the requirements of the ecclesiastical faculty at Boston College, and I hereby certify that they are eligible for the degree of licentiate in sacred theology. Reverend Takashi Miyachi will accept the degree for the class. By virtue of the power invested in me by the trustees of Boston College and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I welcome to the company of scholars the candidates who have been presented to me by their deans and declare them respectively bachelors, masters, and doctors in their appropriate disciplines. Also, by virtue of the power invested in me by the chancellor of the ecclesiastical faculty at Boston College, I welcome to the company of scholars the candidates who have been presented to me by the Dean of the School of Theology and Ministry and declare them awarded the degree of Licentiate in Sacred Theology and Doctor of Theology. Congratulations to all. May I ask Christopher Reynolds to join us for the presentation of the Edward H. Finnegan of the Society of Jesus Award. The Edward H. Finnegan of the Society of Jesus Award is presented each year to the graduating senior who best exemplifies the university motto, ever to excel. This year's recipient, a summa cum laude graduate from the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences, is a member of the Gabelli Presidential Scholars and Chemistry Honors Programs. He is equally accomplished in his service activities, both in outreach to his peers and to marginalized communities in the city of Boston and around the globe, as evidenced by his service as a campus EMT and a four Boston volunteer and an undergraduate researcher on global health equity in Peru, the Dominican Republic, Ecuador, and Liberia. He was recently awarded a Fulbright Research Grant to study healthcare reintegration among former Colombian rebels and displaced persons. For his many accomplishments and pursuit of excellence in all that he does, Boston College confers the 2018 Edward H. Finnegan of the Society of Jesus Award on Christopher Reynolds of the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. May I ask Mary Crane to join us for the presentation of the Bellman Award. <laughs> this year, Boston College is presenting a new award to honor a distinguished faculty member 
whose significant contributions have consistently and purposefully advanced the mission of Boston College. The Bellarmine Award, named after St. Robert Bellarmine of the Society of Jesus, a cardinal and influential Jesuit professor, will be awarded each year at commencement. The inaugural recipient of the Bellarmine Award presented by University President William P. Leahy, SJ, is Thomas F. Radigan, Professor of English and Director of the Institute for the Liberal Arts, Mary Crane, an English department faculty member since 1986 and former chair of the department. Under her leadership, the Institute for the Liberal Arts has deepened the quality of student-faculty exchange and the intellectual life of the university. As a co-chair of the Core Renewal Project and a member of the University Core Renewal Committee since 2015, she has worked tirelessly to revitalize and strengthen the core curriculum at Boston College. Please join us in acknowledging the inaugural recipient of the Bellarmine Award Professor Mary Crane. Kevin McLaughlin, class of 1978, president of the Alumni Association, will now address the graduates of the class of 2018. On behalf of the more than 180,000 Boston College alumni throughout the world, and as president of the Alumni Association, it is my special pleasure to welcome all of you, the class of 2018, to the Boston College Alumni Association family. We trust that your Jesuit education at Boston College has prepared you intellectually and spiritually to seek ever to excel and to truly be men and women for others and be an influence for good in all of your future endeavors. The Boston College Alumni Association is ready to assist you in every way possible and encourages your active involvement in the programs and activities of the Alumni Association from this day forward so that together we can carry on the rich traditions that characterize our great university. Best wishes and congratulations to one and all. Ladies and gentlemen, May I ask you to please rise for the benediction that will be offered by His Eminence Cardinal Sean O'Malley, Archbishop of Boston, and remain standing for the singing of the alma mater along with the university chorale. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we bless and praise your holy name. You are the source of every good gift, the source of life, the source of newness in life and our faith. We gather here in joy and thanksgiving brought together by your loving providence to honor the men and women who are celebrating their graduation here today. May they always seek to su pro provide support and assistance for the less fortunate among us, striving to be men and women for others as they carry on the noble traditions of Boston College, recognizing you as the source of all gifts. And we invoke upon them through the intercession of Mary, the mother of the church, whose feast we celebrate today, St. Ignatius, the founder of the Jesuits, may Almighty God bless you, 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This concludes the university commencement. The, sc <laughs> the school and college diploma ceremonies will begin in approximately 30 minutes. The locations of the various diploma ceremonies are listed on the last pages of the commencement program. And finally, may I ask, that you please remain standing until the dignitaries of the platform and members of the faculty have left the stadium. Graduates, please remain in your places until the music has concluded. <laughs> 